Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this uh, webinar. My name is Chong, your host from Husa Malaysia Investor Development Team. Uh, we'll be starting this webinar in two to three minutes while waiting for the others to dial in. So before that, uh, let's have a quick warm-up session. And I believe everyone would be delighted if you could also participate in this simple poll on your screen now. So we know that the that quarterly earnings announcement could have a significant impact on share price movements. So the question is, is your company prepared to disclose the date of its quarterly financial results release? The options are A, yes, B, no, C, considering, and D, not in the agenda. So we'll spend two minutes on this poll and happy to hear from you. Thanks. So we are still seeing people submitting their posts, so let's give them some time. All right, I think we have the result. So 69% of us here thinking that you know, the companies, your company is ready to you know, share the announcement dates of your quarterly earnings result. So I think Alex, we are done for today. It's a pretty good uh, result that we have now. <laughs> okay, again, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, let me share the result first. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this uh, webinar. Uh, to recall, on the 5th of July, Busan Malaysia made an announcement stating that it will, be in, it will now take on the role of promoting and deepening the culture of investor relations among listed companies in Malaysia. So this crucial step aims to enhance investor experience and to foster better communication between listed companies and their stakeholders. That means this goes beyond shareholders. So to kickstart this effort, uh, we are delighted to welcome you all to, to this uh, inaugural webinar series of Busan Malaysia Investor Relations Program. Today, today's webinar is titled, What do investors look for in your company? Our esteemed guest, Mr. Alexander Chia, Head of Regional Equity Research at IHP Investment Bank, is here to shed light on this important topic. But before we begin, uh, please be reminded that this session is being recorded and the recording will be made available in the public domain for future reference. During the initial part of the session, Alex will be delivering a presentation. Feel free to type in your question anytime and we'll, we will address them during the Q&A session following the presentations. So today's focus will be on the significance of investor relations from the sell side research perspective and what analysts seek from public listed companies. So now, Let's listen to Alex as he share his insight on this matter. Alex, over to you. Yep, uh, morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, Chiang, for the introduction. I uh, hope you can hear me and see me. Uh, just let me put up my slides. OK, uh, I'm actually encouraged by the size of the, the number of attendees uh, this morning. Um, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, I also see some um, some familiar names there. Uh, hi, Lai. Um, long time no see. 
Yeah. So um, look, I, I I want to make this uh, this session um, you know uh, you know uh, participatory. Uh, so you know if you do have uh, questions, uh, you know you need me to reiterate a certain point. Um, I will try and um, look at the Q and A box. Uh, alternatively, uh, we will have time at the end of the session to just run through uh, any questions that you may have. Okay, so just let me, uh, you know, in the interest of uh, structure, uh, just let me run through some of the uh, some of the slides. Okay, um, so I I, I think uh, if you are here attending this uh, this session on investor relations. Uh, I think uh, you are probably, um, you know, either a uh, uh, in, in invest IR, um, uh, you know, a uh, person, or you are part of senior management that is, uh, you know, keen on, um, you know, trying to ensure that the first point of contact for your company uh, is some uh, is is a is a pleasant experience. Okay, so uh, essentially, whenever a um, uh, somebody from the sell side. Uh, an analyst, or maybe from the buy side, from the fund, uh, you know, from the fund management side, or when they want to look into a new company, um, you know, the first thing they would do, um, you know, one of the first things they would do, um, you know, other than reach out to to sell side analysts, um, would obviously be to to look at your website, right? Uh, and the the first point of contact in your website uh, is usually somebody, um, you know, from uh, the IR side or corporate communications or even. Uh, sometimes if you don't know who to reach out to, uh, in the old days, we tried to reach out to, to like the company registrar and things like that. But these days, I think most um, most corporates uh, have a dedicated IR page. They have a website and, and things are obviously today a, a lot better uh, than what they used to be, um, you know, in, in, the, in the bad old days. Uh, so, so essentially, uh, the investor relations function um, is usually the first point of contact, um, you know, between investors and 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 the company itself. And really, um, you know, if you are keen to um, make a good impression uh, on investors, uh, then clearly, um, you know, this first uh, contact, um, you know, needs to be a relatively polished one uh, where possible. Okay. Now, secondly, uh, now most of you, uh, most of the people who are doing this uh, investor relations function, uh, you will probably be uh, a part of a, a PLC, public listed company. So I think um, you know, as um, uh, practitioners uh, in the IR function, uh, I think it's it's very important to acknowledge that uh, you know a Berhad, a PLC uh, is. You know, it comes with a different set of responsibilities uh, compared to if you were part of a uh, Sindhyan Bahad. Sindhyan Bahad is basically your grandfather's company, right? So you can do whatever you want. You can don't do anything you want, and uh, you don't have anybody to be responsible to except for your, you know, yourself and and whoever your your you know your 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 other uh, small circle of shareholders. Uh, but if you are a PLC. Uh, then essentially uh, the investor relations function uh, needs to be a strategic responsibility um, because this uh, involves the management of communications between the executive leadership of the corporate uh, and the financial community, right? PLCs will have a responsibility to the minority shareholders. And I think in the, in the old days, um, you know, bef you know, be uh, before uh, you know this investor relations thing, um, you know, became you know it has you know moved to where it is today. Um, you know, even you know with uh, you know on with companies that are listed, uh, you know, managements tended to have this mindset that hey, you know, this is my company, I run this company, and um, you know, you know, the fact that we happen to have minorities. Uh, is just a, um, a, 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 a minor inconvenience uh, that we don't really need to uh, attend too much to. And I think uh, those days, uh, I think, are gone. And, and really, um, you know, the fact that we have minorities means that public listed companies uh, need to have this responsibility to uh, the minority. So essentially, the role of, of IR is essentially to convey, uh, you know, the, 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 the company's uh, aspirations uh, 
um, the goals, um, you know, financial performance strategy and other re relevant information uh, to uh, stakeholders, uh, shareholders, uh, potential investors, and uh, even uh, sell side analysts, right? So this initiative helps, uh, you know, the minority shareholders to make informed decisions uh, whether or not to invest in your company. Uh, because I think at the end of the day, um, you know, as, as investor relations people, uh, we all want to, um, you know, make a good impression, convey a good story uh, to investors. Uh, and basically, you know, if, if the share price goes up, um, you know, along with this positive IR impression, uh, then, then, then so be it, right? Uh, then all the better. Uh, but of course, I think, um, you know, the, the, there are various uh, pitfalls that, um, you know, some of it are, are fairly um, uh, obvious, but just let me run through it uh, as well. So again, um, you know, the, the point of, of IR of the obligation to minority shareholders, I think is to convey, um, you know, a clear and precise message to investors, uh, to minorities to in, in provide updates on the latest developments and strategies, right? And I think uh, it's to facilitate, um, you know, uh, Q and A and and the communication, a two way communication of information between uh, management and and the shareholders. So I think uh, essentially, uh, you know, the 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 whole point of having an IR, um, you know, is also to free up senior management time. Now, as in as sell side investors, uh, sell side analysts, um, you know, from time to time. We do, uh, uh, you know, investors and and uh, shareholders. We will want to have some face time uh, with uh, the CXO, the C-suite people. But obviously, the C-suite people, um, you know, have other things to do other than to deal with investors, right? I mean, you can't be talking to uh, fund managers and analysts all the time because you know you got a company to run. Um, you got, you know, you got you know, uh, KPIs to meet. Uh, so I think uh, this IR function uh, helps to make effective use of senior management time so that they can, you know, they have time to focus on the business of running your business um, and, and some of the more, uh, you know, mundane stuff, um, you know, preparation of slides, communication, some basic, um, uh, 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 you know, presentations, uh, you know, a lot of it, you can, you know, it can be delegated to uh, investor relations people. And, you know, this can be either uh, in-house or outsource uh, IR. I'll talk a little bit more about this, about this right? Um, and essentially, the whole point is that you want to um, distinguish yourselves uh, between other listed peers. Uh, and this is uh, going to be a reputational a reputational and the branding issue for your company if you have a polished IR. Um, if you have a, you know, a non-existent IR function or if the IR uh, uh, person running it is incompetent, uh, then essentially you, you give a very uh, uh, a negative uh, kind of um, uh, perspective of your company uh, to the investors. And uh, once uh, you know, uh, investors have this negative you know, perception of your company, uh, it's always difficult to, uh, to shake it off, right? Uh, you want to attract and retain investors. You want to uh, increase uh, research coverage. You want to have a, a proper price discovery for your, for your shares, um, you know, for, for the value of your company. You want to uh, establish a fair valuation metrics so that, um, you know, if, if, the, if the investors are not, if you feel that investors are not, um, you know, providing a, a proper um, uh, uh, valuation or, or an angle for your company. And if you think that, uh, you know, some uh, elements of your, uh, you know, of, of your, your company's value prospect is not being properly communicated to the market, uh, then that is where, uh, you know, the, the, this uh, investor relations uh, uh, function uh, can actually come in to help uh, uh, to help uh, communicate the correct message to the market. Uh, and also, you know, a good IR will obviously, um, you know, uh, providing a good perception of the company, uh, providing good communication uh, with investors between the senior, senior management 
uh, will also help to uh, encourage trading liquidity, um, you know, and obviously help to create shareholders value. Uh, I think also what um, it will be important is that, um, you know, we've been, you know, as a country, as a market, uh, you know, in, in this kind of globalized world, uh, we have been lurching uh, from one crisis into another. Uh, and essentially, um, at some point or another, uh, some of the macro uh, headwinds and some of the macro currents uh, will affect your company, um, you know, one way or another. And essentially, um, you know, IR also has a crisis management function uh, to help to stabilize the stock price and obviously prevent uh, excessive fluctuation and obviously to, to maintain um, the long-term uh, financial impact to uh, your company's share price. Okay, now, obviously, the, the fair dissemination of information uh, is going to be important. Um, you know, you can say that, oh, you know, if you've done a Bursa announcement, um, you know, my job is done. Um, and, um, you know, but I think uh, your job is half done if you've done a, 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 an official Bursa announcement. Um, you know, your job may be, um, you know, done according to the letter of the law, but I think um, if you want to maintain a positive um, uh, kind of um, uh, uh, perception for the market uh, on your company, uh, then I think uh, you will need to make uh, your company, uh, make, make yourselves available, right? Either, um, you know, the IR function or whether it's, um, you know, the, the, the senior C-suite people. Okay, now, um, in-house versus outsource, right? Um, I think what, what then do you do, right? I, I think end of the day, uh, whether a, a company, there's no right way or wrong way. I think at the end of the day, uh, it really depends on the, uh, the extent of the resources uh, that uh, the company has available. I think the smaller companies uh, that tend to be, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, more, uh, you know, that tend to, you know, you need to tightly, uh, manage your, your 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 resources and your budgets. Uh, I think it's it's a, a more effective way uh, to outsource your IR function. Uh, nowadays, uh, there are you know truckloads of uh, IR specialists uh, out there uh, who can actually help you uh, to um, to communicate your your message to the market effectively. Um, and there, there are obviously many ways to skin a cat. Um, and uh, you can either use them in various ways. You can either give them a retainer or you can just use them for, uh, for certain uh, one-off kind of um, uh, uh, initiatives, right? So you can either uh, do that, outsource it, uh, or you can hire an in-house uh, professional, uh, build an in-house team um, you know, to, 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 to manage this IRA. So there are positives and, and advantages and disadvantages to this. Um, you know, I think if you have an in-house guy, in-house team, uh, then clearly, uh, you know, the the their understanding of the company will necessarily uh, be a lot deeper. Uh, there'll be uh, you know long-term cost efficiencies. Uh, you know, more effective. Um, you know, access uh, to management. Um, but of course, um, you know, the 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 ability for you know if if the company is huge, uh, then uh, there will be resource constraints inevitably. Uh, and there also be workload and and the ability to to scale up uh, depending on the size of your the company that you're managing. Uh, but of course, uh, you know the uh, the external IR guys. Um, you know you are. I mean, the advantages to them uh, is obviously to to um, you know the ability to harness their expertise and their uh, experience um, in 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 all of this, right? And uh, and obviously to help to. Uh, provide a, a wider network, uh, wider net to bring in uh, and and offer investor access. And in in fact, some of some companies uh, have utilized both uh, in house as well as external IR. Um, you know, and and of course, um, you know, and and uh, it really depends. And which way the way you go, obviously, will depend on uh, the kind of resources you want to you want to blow on this uh, functionality uh, and the kind of um, complexity of your of your business. Okay, now I think um, you know a lot of this. Sometimes the IR job scope uh, will sort of blur the lines between what is IR and what is corporate communications. Um, I guess in in the small to medium sized kind of companies, um, the IR function uh, may also 
um, you know, try and build in the corporate comm side. Uh, but for the bigger companies, um, you know, corporate comm is corporate comm um, and IR is IR. Um, and, and of course, um, you know, the, 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 the areas of, um, uh, you know, of responsibilities uh, can be different. Uh, so I think what investor relations people uh, can uh, do or do do, uh, you know, they will help to organize uh, briefings, um, you know, uh, with the minority shareholders, with stakeholders, um, EGMs, AGMs, uh, meetings with companies, uh, maybe in involving uh, site visits for analysts. Um, they will review and monitor uh, research reports um, that are floating around out there uh, to ensure that the messaging uh, that is actually going out from the company to the public uh, is along the lines of what, uh, you know, of, of where you want to drive uh, the messaging uh, to ensure that um, the, the, the market uh, understands the, the, the value proposition uh, being offered by the corporate, um, you know, to the public. Uh, and of course, um, you know, from time to time, uh, some of the medium to larger companies uh, will also uh, do, uh, you know, deal roadshows and non-deal roadshows um, you know, typically with, um, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, with brokers, with brokers. Uh, in fact, last week, um, you know, RHB, uh, we facilitate, we facilitated uh, a non-deal roadshow uh, for a Thai company, uh, PTT Corp, PTT PLC, uh, the largest uh, company in Thailand. Uh, they were in uh, uh, KL to, 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 for a two-day, um, you know, roadshow with investors, um, you know, and, and therefore, uh, you know, the, the brokers can help to function to 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 facilitate this uh, but uh, in all, in addition to the senior finance person um, she, uh, she was also accompanied by two investor relations uh, professionals uh, you know that are part of the uh, PTT IR team right and um, you know from time to time um, that will happen and um, you know and and usually the IR function uh, will be the contact point for uh, you know for investor queries. Okay, I, I think some of this, uh, like I said, um, some of this IR job scope um, may sort of like um, crisscross and overlap with um, uh, the corporate comm kind of function. Um, you know, so I guess it's up to the companies, uh, uh, you know, the, your size and, and your resources, um, you know, in, as, as to whether or not uh, you want to have a separate corporate comm or a, a combined PR, IR, slash kind of function uh, to, to, to do both. Um, and I think, uh, um, you know, that is something that, uh, you know, you, will, you guys will need to, to internally uh, manage, right? So other job scopes, um, we know will include, um, you know, helping out with uh, event management, uh, annual reports, state of reports, uh, maintaining the, the IR, IR, IR um, uh, tab on your website, uh, including uh, helping out with digital marketing, etc. Okay, uh, from so now um, I, I just wanted to run through uh, this is the last section of the slides, right? I just wanted to run through uh, some of the things that, uh, from my perspective as a sell side analyst, um, you know what I think um, investor relation people should be doing and what they shouldn't be doing, right? And I think um, and a lot of this is commonsensical, um, but I think you will be surprised, um, you know, at the, you know, that, um, you know, at the, at the, you know, that some, some companies don't actually take the time uh, to do some of these things, uh, which we think are important to project, um, you know, a, a more positive uh, image for your company uh, to properly communicate, um, you know, any kind of uh, messages um, you know, that, uh, that needs to be communicated to the public. Okay, so essentially, um, investor relations function should continue to do more uh, to, I think the main objective here is to maintain transparency, right? Because as a public asset company, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a obligation and responsibility to minority shareholders, um, you know, and, and therefore, there is a need to provide uh, accurate, timely, and transparent information to the public at large. Okay, um, and uh, and as part of that um, uh, preparation uh, and transparency, uh, I think there is a need to obviously prepare thoroughly uh, for earnings calls. Now, it's great when 
you you know you're you've got fantastic results. Um, you've got a positive message to 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 communicate. Um, but the challenge comes when you know your results don't actually you know don't actually meet the mark. Uh, you know how then do you communicate this, right? I, I think the the part of this this IR role um, is really the need to um, you know as part of this transparency uh, uh, objective, right? Is to manage investor expectations. Now there is a need to ensure that you don't overpromise and underdeliver. Okay. Now um, I think as a representative of uh, PLC. I think the inherent desire is always that oh you know we got to we got to uh, put out a positive uh, uh, spin uh, we got to, everything is going to be positive right so that um, you know investors are happy they are encouraged and the share price goes up right everybody wants things to go up they never want it to go down but uh, you know that in reality that is never always the case um, you know we had a a, a company. Um, you know, recently, um, won't name name, won't name names. Um, they were guiding for um, positive margin reversion. Um, they were guiding for lower feedstock costs. Uh, they were guiding for um, you know, uh, basically, they were selling a good story, right? And um, um, you know, so so essentially, this was the message that was communicated. But when the results came out. Um, unfortunately, uh, margins contracted. Um, you know, they 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 uh, they hedged. Um, you know, on the on the on on the on the on the on the dollar. Or, you know, and and basically the 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 FX call went the wrong way. Uh, they hedged on the the um, the, uh, the input costs. Um, and input costs. Um, you know, uh, went the wrong way, and essentially margins tanked. And um, you know, results that came out uh, was very different uh, to what was initially guided. So I think uh, inevitably, uh, sell side analysts, you know, we we you know we we try to I know I try to tell my analysts, look, you know, you you're not supposed to um, be a reporter. You're an analyst, so you need to analyze. But I think you know part of that analysis is inevitably going to be colored by the kind of messaging that is coming through to the cell phone analyst from the company. So essentially, if you're selling a good story, um, you have to ensure um, that by and large, you actually uh, are in a position to cash the check that you're writing, right? Don't write a check that you can't cash, okay? It's then, um, you know, whenever the, then when there's an earnings disappointment, when earnings don't come in, um, in in line with what has been guided, uh, then your management credibility uh, will be called into question. Um, you know whether or not management can be trusted, uh, whether or not um, you know analysts in the future. Uh, I mean, it's like the boy who cried wolf, right? I mean, you 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 go and tell people a good story. And you know, and investors give you the benefit of the doubt. They believe you. Um, you know, it can happen a couple of times, right? You know, um, you know, uh, you know, once bitten, twice shy. Um, you know, and uh, and I think the 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 onus here um, is to ensure that the message that is communicated to the to the to the public. Uh, is going to be consistent. Now, if you have, um, you know, if you know that the outlook is going to have some challenges, uh, then I think it's always uh, important to prepare the market, to prepare the ground uh, for the possibility that, um, you know, there, there could be headwinds. I mean, in, 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 you know, in the corporate world, um, you know, nothing always goes hunky-dory. Uh, there's always some, some brown stuff that can, it has the potential of hitting the fan. Uh, and really, um, you know, if you want to sell, uh, you know, the positives, uh, you also need to balance it out uh, with the risks. And and I think it's always always good to, um, you know, provide a balanced uh, message that goes out. Okay, to ensure that because the last thing you want is you know for your share price to do this and then suddenly tank. Um, 
there's also I can also name um, uh, uh, various public listed companies. Um, there was one fairly large cap, won't name names, um, listed uh, back you know uh, easily six seven years ago. Um, fairly large cap in a in a big industrial sector. Um, not long after uh, the IPO, the quarterly results came out. And the quarterly results was a massive disappointment. And obviously the stock tanked. And since that day in the IPO in 2017, that stock has never seen daylight in terms of the share price. Okay, um, okay, it, it part of it may be due to industry fundamentals, sectoral fundamentals, but I think a lot of it um, is due to the fact that you know, right at the beginning of your, your PLC journey, your journey as a public asset company, you tank in a big way, um, you know, and, um, you know, maybe the, the um, ECM team for the investment bank that uh, advised them on the IPO, uh, they were overly uh, ambitious with regards to pricing. Because don't forget, right? I mean, if you are, if you are one of the, you know, if you're a part of the senior management, uh, you will typically uh, have dealt with the investment bankers, uh, say the ECM team, the equity capital markets team, right? Those guys um, have the responsibility is to the corporate, right? They are responsible for um, getting the best IPO price and the best of everything um, so that, you know, the, 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 the subscribers, the buy side, the funds will pay top dollar for your IPO. Uh, but, you know, they don't so much really have a responsibility uh, to the, the investment public. Uh, so I think it's, it's you know, from, from where I sit as a sell side analyst, um, you know, we are uh, part of an investment bank. So of course, we have obligations not only to the corporate, uh, we have obligations also to the investment public. So which is why, um, you know, when, whenever there is a, um, a, an IPO note and we have to do uh, PDIE reports, uh, there's always this, this um, battle, right, between uh, the analysts and our ECM team. You know, hey, you know, are you sure you can go for, you know, can we, how, how do we justify 50 times target PE um, for, you know, for your stock, you know, when, when the peers are trading at, you know, 30 times, you know, 40 times. Of course, ECM guys will always want to pressure you, um, you know, for um, the highest possible price, right? Um, or or the, to, to, to deliver the, the, the best possible kind of message so that markets will pay top dollar. But as an analyst, uh, at the end of the day, after the IPO, uh, we have to face our clients, right? If we said, hey, this stock is worth 50 times and when the market, when it lists, uh, it only trades at 20 times, you know, where do I hide my face, right? So uh, there's always this, um, uh, uh, this, this ongoing battle uh, between, uh, you know, the, 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 the ECM part and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the investor part. So um, that, there's always this, this thing, um, you know, that, um, that needs to be balanced out, okay? So, okay, I, I've digressed a little bit. Um, so I think in re the rest of it, the do's, uh, you need to stay visible. Um, you know, whenever there's good news, it's always easy, easy to, to, to be engaged and all that. And, but the trick here is when the brown stuff is the fan, negative news in the market, bad news all over the place, uh, do you then crawl back into your shell and give the investor, give the, the, the public uh, the silent treatment? Uh, do you go, do you go uh, dark all of a sudden? Um, you know, so that will be the test of, um, you know, your, your, your company's ability uh, to remain visible uh, and to respond to, uh, you know, to, to situations of crisis, right? Um, you know, especially when, you know, it's always easy to do your job when, when you know, there's good news to, to communicate, uh, but the challenge comes when, uh, you know, we have a negative situation uh, and that is the time where investors need their hand held uh, and they want to be reassured by senior management uh, that they are on top of things. Okay, uh, moving on. I think uh, the other do's uh, fairly self-explanatory. Um, you know, you need to facilitate access to the, to the C-suite uh, people. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be one of the CXOs. Uh, it can be a division head. 
Uh, it can be one of the, the business heads, a subsidiary head, um, you know, a pillar head, um, you know, and that will really showcase the depth of your management team, uh, allowing investors to get a different perspective of the business. And I think um, whoever, um, you know, the company appoints to, to communicate the messages to the public, I think investors need to understand investor expectations. Uh, they need to be able to tailor your message to different stakeholders. So if you are talking to a, a reporter or you're talking to a retail guy, if you're talking to a um, uh, 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 you know uh, somebody in your AGM, for example, uh, there's obviously a, a need to tailor your message. Um, you know, if you go too detailed into the technicalities of the business or the technicalities of uh, the financials, um, you know, then you 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 know the message will be lost in translation, right? Because you know. You know the, the typical uh, retail investor, for example, uh, not to dis the, the not 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 to say bad things about retailers, um, but I think generally um, the retail messaging uh, needs to be a little more simplistic and more general um, and more direct to the point. Uh, but if you are talking to uh, institutional uh, investors uh, to sell side analysts, then of course uh, you can and should. Uh, uh, you know, tend to be a bit more uh, technical uh, to, to 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 drill down into the um, uh, to the more tech, you know the more complicated aspects. Okay, the other part obviously is to ensure that um, your disclosure. Uh, you need to ensure that your whoever speaking to the public, uh, you need to ensure that you meet your compliance requirements. Right, you cannot be saying things that are not in the public domain. Uh, you cannot be saying things that are not public information um, and you need to know what you can say and you can't say. Uh, and that's where your investor relations uh, person can guide your C-suite people, um, you know, not to open his mouth too big. You got to open it, but don't open so big um, so that, um, you know, your, 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 you know, the, the, the proper, um, you know, uh, message goes out. Uh, that is uh, compliant with the regulations, okay? So that's always very important. Uh, at RHP, we are always very cognizant of the need to remain uh, compliant uh, so that we don't get into trouble. Uh, you don't want, um, you know, the SE to call you up and, you know, to bring you to a room with no windows and you, you get this spotlight shine in your face and we ask it, you get asked all sorts of difficult, difficult questions. Um, you know, so I, I think... Um, um, you know, that, that is something that you obviously don't want to happen. Okay. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, communicating a message that is within the, the realms of uh, the com uh, regulations and, and compliant rules are very important. Uh, again, some of these don'ts, I, I may have mentioned it, um, you know, in my uh, verbal diarrhea over the last, the last um, 30, 40 minutes. But I think uh, the idea here is don't, uh, withhold or misrepresent information. Don't give out false or inaccurate information. Uh, I think we all know what happened to um, you know um, publicly listed companies um, who have been in the news. Uh, you know people like Transmile. Um, you know that that uh, you know that uh, gave uh, false information. Uh, you know that then uh, you know obviously we all know what happened to uh, the, the the company. Um, and obviously, we don't. We also, uh, you know, we, we also cannot, um, you know, neglect the the need to communicate uh, with investors during uh, times of crisis. Okay. Again, uh, some of this, as I mentioned before, won't dwell too much into it. Don't write checks you can't cash. Uh, don't rely solely on press releases. Uh, you also need to ensure, um, you know, the risk of being accused of uh, insider trading. Um, you need to ensure to to the to the insider regulations, uh, and you need to ensure uh, that whatever information you are communicating, uh, you know, is isn't uh, non-public material information. Okay. Okay. I think um, that's pretty much what I have to to communicate. Um, you know, I do thank you for taking the time uh, to listen to me. Um, yeah. So. You know, I, I, let me just jump into the Q&A. Um, 
to see what questions we have. Uh, why, what do research houses look for when deciding whether to initiate coverage and what can PLCs do to increase, get increased analyst coverage? Okay, from a cell site analyst perspective, right? Uh, when we uh, initiate coverage, uh, we want to ensure uh, a couple of things. One is that um, if investors don't already own your stock, uh, then we want to typically sell side analysts will want to initiate with a buy, right? So if you want to initiate a coverage on a stock with a buy call, then you need to have uh, reasons to call a stock a buy. There needs to be a sexy story. Uh, there needs to be a valuation angle. Um, also, um, as you know, as you may know, um, RHB, uh, we've been doing this small cap book for many, many years. I think it's like 16, 17, 18 years, right? So one of the reasons why, uh, one of the reasons for us to decide on whether to feature uh, a, a small cap company in our book uh, is also management accessibility. So the last thing we want is to put a, a company in our, in our book or you know, initiate coverage or whatever, and then find out that, wow, this company has got really good, good story, interesting angle, uh, good valuations, but we can't get hold of management. How do we get to, to communicate? How do we sell this company? I mean, buy side uh, fund managers, they, you know, to a certain extent, they, 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 will, they will want to, they, they are willing to listen to sell side analysts spin the story right on company ABC. But at the end of the day, before they put their money uh, and invest, they will want to talk to the companies, right? They will want to have access to management. So if we can't give them uh, access to management, or we're not confident uh, that, um, that management will make themselves available, uh, then it really is, is a deal breaker. Uh, so when it comes to, to, to being included in the RHB small cap book, for example, um, and and so so basically uh, to Andrew Andrew Fernandez your question about uh, what research so we need to typically we need to have a positive source so it's really um, no point uh, initiating with a sell call or initiating with a neutral call if and if the if fund managers don't own the stock then what's the point of initiating with a sell call um, you know what's that there's nothing to sell right so. As, as agency brokers, we want to do business, right? If we're recommending a stock, we obviously want to, to, to recommend the stock and, um, you know, clients make money and, uh, you know, clients, uh, fund managers can trade through RHB and, and we get the agency call, right? I mean, that, that's the agency model. Um, you know, so we typically want to uh, initiate with, with a buy call, with a positive story, uh, with access to management, okay? Um, do you think it's better not to provide profit guidance um, to avoid the bread impression, especially when the company is not performing? Um, I think really the, 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 the you know, providing the guidance, um, you know, there are many shades of gray, right? I mean, you know, I, I don't think any kind of corporate will want to put their neck on the line to say, oh, this quarter, we're going to make 100 million patami, right? Um, first of all, I think it's going to be uh, it, it may it, it may be uh, against uh, uh, compliance rules depending on how you <coughs> excuse me how you communicate this. Uh, but I think end of the day, um, uh, you know, because analysts are outsiders, right? We we may know the companies very well, but at the end of the day, we are outsiders. And at the end of the day, there is a large reliance on uh, by the analysts uh, on management guidance. So the management guidance can, can, be, um, can be more explicit or less explicit. Um, you know, it really depends on, uh, you know, uh, you know, how, how, of, you know, how much, what kind of guidance you give. You know, you, you can be, oh, yeah, I think, you know, this year we should be able to do, um, you know, single digit, uh, you know, EPS growth uh, year on year. Uh, kind of thing. Okay, that that's pretty much kind of general kind of profit guidance, right? But you you know if you you know all you can whisper to uh, to to somebody and say, oh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do uh, 
100 billion or 150 billion this quarter, you can be explicit. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, um, you know, it's better to, to guide. You can also guide in general terms, whether you can, your guide, whether it's, it's um, you know, there, 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 there's, you know, there's margin uh, pressure. Uh, you can guide, oh, there's margin pressure because, um, you know, our, our raw material prices are, are, are spiking up uh, because, you know, uh, you know the, the, the producer in the Ukraine can't export their stuff out. And, uh, you know, and therefore we have to source it from somebody else, somewhere else, or we have to ship it in um, using air freight at a higher price, um, you know, and therefore, um, you know, the, the, that, that is going to have an impact on, 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 on margins, for example. Um, so I think um, the, the, the message here is, um, you know, ensuring that if there is a positive message, you should, you can guide as such, but if there's a negative message, you should not be afraid um, to, uh, to, to, to guide negatively. Because at the end of the day, uh, as a PLC, uh, what I urge you to not be sensitive to uh, target prices set by analysts that are below your expectations, or even to be sensitive to a sell call. Because a sell call is nothing personal, right? It's not a, a slur on your personal reputation or, or your, your ability to manage a company. It can be, uh, you know, for, you know, hey, you know, I mean, the whole industry is in a, in a, in a, in a, in a bad place, right? So, you know, your, your profitability over the next couple of quarters is going to be challenging. Um, you know, or your share price could have doubled in the last two months and it's, you're trading at 60 times PE. So if the rest of your peers are trading at 20 times and you are doing 60 times, then you know what you expect, right? So you know sometimes it's a the sell call is a function of pure valuations. It's not a function of um, you know of of uh, it's not a reflection that you know you you know the, the company is or management is crap, right? It's it's far from that. Okay, so I think uh, you know the uh, what I, I I didn't point out in my slides earlier on is that. Um, I think there is a need for, 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 you know, so sometimes, you know, we have had instances whereby, you know, my analysts put out a sell call on this company and then, you know, the, 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 the company's mirage, uh, they get all sensitive. They don't want to take our calls anymore. And uh, we get put in, you know, we get, we get, we get we're given a cold shoulder. I mean, come on, it, it, your public is the company, right? You know, you, you're, 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 you're trading at 60 times, as a valuation issue, it's not a slur on your personal kind of thing. So uh, I think investors, the message here is that investors shouldn't be so sensitive to, to negative uh, recommendations. Okay, uh, just let me quickly run through some of the other call, uh, some of the other Q&As. Um, impact of retail investors, institutional investors. I mean, the retail investors provide a volume. Um, you know, retail investors can also help to drive up uh, share price, can help to support the share price. So you know, your, your, the, the demand from the retail investors is as good as a demand from institutional investors. The only difference here is that retail investors tend to be more uh, short-term in their trading, uh, in their investment horizon. Um, you know, whereas, um, you know, long-only funds uh, typically uh, also, um, uh, 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 you know, you know, hold the company, hold the shares maybe for a longer period and an investment horizon is probably a little bit more uh, longer than your, your, your typical retail. So retail guys, you know, you, you know if, I, if I tell them about, oh, uh, you know, Telecom Malaysia, you know, really good stock, you know, but, you know, when they, when they see blue chip stocks, you know, their eyes glaze over and then they, they fall asleep, right? Because it's to them, there's not enough, uh, uh, there's not enough, uh, uh, volatility in the share price uh, and and the volatility in in the share price is how the retailers how the retailers like it uh, obviously it's volatile up is better than volatile down but uh, you know they 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 don't they don't like companies that don't do much you know have a kind of flattish kind of share price um, they want uh, action right uh, and they want uh, uh, the investment horizon is is much shorter okay um, next Q and A uh, what are the existing digital channels for our information for I mean um, you can call for uh, analyst briefings on a quarterly basis, on a half yearly basis. 
uh, you can you know you can you can you can hold uh, out of uh, out of result season. You can hold a company briefing anytime. Uh, either your IR can can manage it by by uh, sending a message out to the sell side analysts, or you can engage uh, an external IR and they can manage this for you. Um, so and of course you can also do a press release. Uh, you can um, you know you can you can update information on your website and so on. Um, how do we reach out to RHP for initiation? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, as, if, there, if, there's, uh, there, if there's a need to reach out uh, to analysts, uh, again, uh, external IR can assist. Um, of course, um, you know, just because an analyst comes to see your company, uh, it doesn't mean that it will meet all the criteria for the sell side broker to initiate coverage, right? So, you know, we, we need to decide whether or not there's a sexy story. Are we likely to have a buy call? Um, are we going to have access to initiation, access to management, et cetera? Um, yeah. Uh, what are the ways that we can, what can we do to improve our chances of getting attention from analysts? Um, communication with, with, uh, with, the, with, with uh, the investment public. Uh, and of course, you know, if you're if you're asked for for meetings, um, you know, with sell side analysts or even buy side analysts, buy side fund managers, um, you know, do accommodate uh, requests. Um, you know, and and um, you know, there is there's always uh, uh, you know there's always and of course there's a need. You know, we're always looking for the next sexy story, right? I mean, if you recall um, back in the old days, uh, we started. Uh, you know. In, in our small cap book, we started promoting a company called Press Metal when the market cap was sub 1 billion. Okay, today, um, Press Metal is a massive company, um, you know, KLCI stock, um, you know, so the, 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 the ability to get noticed, obviously you need to have a sexy story. Uh, you need to have a growth angle. Um, you know, and of course, um, you know, that always, that will always help. But I think the accessibility of management and the, the fact that you have a good IR uh, will uh, help uh, to get, um, you know, uh, uh, the attention from the sell side. How do you spur interest in the counter that's somewhat considered stable? I mean, at the end of the day, right, uh, we also, as an analyst, we also look at, at trading liquidity. If a share pro if a company has the shares are very tightly held. Um, you know, managing, you know, seeing them, the, the controlling shareholders own 75, 80% of the stock is all locked up, you know, and uh, the other stock, the other 20%, uh, you know, in the public domain is all locked up by senior shell, uh, by, by big shareholders. Then your trading volume is, is, is almost nothing. There's no volume. Then as an analyst, I mean, why, 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 you know, how do we, in, uh, how do we promote a company that has no trader volume? Um, so an example would be um, Nestle, right? Um, stock used to trade at, I don't um, know, $80, $90. And then uh, EPF um, uh, sold down some stick in, in, in Nestle. And now then suddenly the stock shot up. Now it's $130, $140, $150. Um, you know, and because I think a big chunk of that is because uh, EPF sell down of, of Nestle, uh, this is all public information, um, uh, was able to improve the, the trading liquidity uh, for the stock, right? So, and, and therefore uh, that helped to ignite uh, demand for the stock, okay? Uh, how do we encourage board involved? Okay, typically the board itself, um, you know, unless you're part of the, the board is also part of the C-suite. Uh, they don't typically get involved in 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 IR related matters. I think um, you know managing investors um, is something that um, you know you know in my view <clears throat> you need to delegate it to your C suite and to your invest and to your senior management. Uh, I think as as the board level, I think board members um, you know sh really should um, should remain above all that, and they should look at look into setting. Uh, the long-term direction for the company. Okay. Um, okay. What else? 
Have you seen uh, an increase in retail investor activism, uh, wanting to be more involved in engagements with management beyond annual uh, AGM new trends? Um, yes, uh, we have seen um, you know the, the the setup, the start of it, things like investment clubs. Um, you know, investors these days, the retailers, they are more uh, savvy. Um, you know, you know, in RHB, we take a lot of effort, uh, particularly amongst my retail in investment analyst colleagues, um, to go and go out and make the effort to educate investors, right? About about uh, you know about about what you look for when you invest. Um, you know, you know, to have a certain level of um, fundamental knowledge. You know, to know at least what is PE, what is a PB. Um, you know, and what is EPS growth? Uh, what is what is EPS? I mean, you you need to have that basic. So I think investors these days, retailers included, are more um, uh, savvy and they're more uh, well informed. Uh, so I think as they get more savvy and more well informed, uh, they will want to have uh, in, uh, engagement. So uh, from time to time, um, you know, we do organize. Um, uh, you know corporate access uh, for our retail uh, investors. So from time to time, we do that. Um, you know, but I, I think the, the company needs to be, uh, be a, a company that is, uh, uh, is, is interesting to retail investors. So for example, if I bought, if I brought a blue chip company, right? I don't know, you know, Telecom or whatever, I brought them to see the retailers, they, you know, by and large, they, they probably wouldn't want to be, in, you know, in, in interested. But if I bought, brought them to see uh, a new recently listed IPO uh, stock that has been doing really well, uh, sexy story. Yeah, I mean, for sure, uh, there will be retail interest. Okay, will uh, sell side research analysts talk to key management or attend conference calls before revive? Yeah, I mean, typically we, you know, you know, analysts, you know, we, we try to, uh, uh, consider not only what messages are being communicated by management, but we also, I also tell the analysts, look, you are an analyst, so please analyze. Uh, don't be a parrot for management. Uh, don't just repeat management guidance, right? So you need to channel check. Uh, you need to, to, you know, is whatever is management is selling you, you know, um, does it smell off? Uh, you know, does it smell funny? Uh, you need to be able to make your own mind up if you are being sold a, 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 a BS story or whether or not, you know, some the, the message that you are being told, whether it's credible or not. So analysts need to consider uh, information from all sources, not just from management, uh, but, you know, we also try and do ground checks. Uh, we talk to the customers. We talk to people in the industry. Uh, we talk to suppliers. Uh, you know, and so on before um, making a uh, making our decision on uh, on the overall call uh, on the company and whether or not we should be uh, you know revising the, the the company's valuation up or down. Okay, um, the COVID pandemic has impacted company performance. Currently rebuilding. No interesting news. Do we still engage with analysts? Um, look, I mean, there there will be you know. I think you will probably know um, if you. If there is investor interest in your stock, not every single company will attract investor interest. I mean, if you know, I mean, if the if the industry that you're in is challenging, um, and you know, it's going to be challenging for a while, um, you know, or if your your share price is tightly held, I mean, for whatever reason, there may or may not be be um, uh, 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 explicit investor interest in your company at the current moment. But that's not to say that, um, you know, there won't forever and ever, Salama Lamanya, there won't be any kind of investor interest. So I think things change, um, you know, uh, you know the, the situation can improve. Uh, so I think, you know, if at the end of the day, um, you know, if you want your share price to improve, and you know, don't we all want the share price to go up, um, then I think in order to do that, uh, we still need to, uh, you know, maintain uh, you know communication with the investment public hi alexa this yeah. is definitely a very hot q and a sessions uh now we are at 11 o'clock but uh could you probably go for another 10 to 15 minutes because i 
I see some question in the chat box. So probably you can go to 10.40 a.m. The start the questions. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you want to listen to me, uh, <laughs> happy, happy to, to, to continue yeah. taking questions. Yeah, okay, sure. I've got another question here in the, in the queue, question box. Sexy story is good, but sometimes I feel analysts and brokers overlook fundamental position of the companies. Reason why investors buy the shares in the first place, long-term growth of sustainable earnings is overlooked. Um, sector story speculative. Look, I mean, there will be different analysts who look at different companies for different reasons, right? Uh, some people look, um, you know, uh, so some people are, you know, they they look for dividends, right? So they they are happy, you know, if I get my, you know, my my, my six five six seven eight percent yield, um, and even though the share price doesn't move, um, you know, if I, I get the uh, if I get the dividend yields, um, you know, long term growth. Uh, sustainable earnings. Um, so, for example, I mean, going back to to a company like Nestle, right? I mean, it's what what is it? It's a consumer company. They make uh, consumer staples. They sell stuff that you know people have to buy, right? I mean, end of the day, even if you got to eat, right? So, you know, we we you know the 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 stuff that that a company like Nestle uh, will uh, sell to you is always going to be in demand. Uh, you're always going to have to drink Milo, um, and you know, and and so on, right? So. There may not be uh, growth, but there will be uh, 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 maybe low single-digit growth. You know, three percent, five percent growth per annum. Yeah, not particularly sexy. Not you know like uh, you know uh, 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 a kind of a exploding bomb kind of kind of uh, uh, thing. But hey, you know, rain or shine, they're gonna give you your five percent growth, right? Um, you know, so from that perspective. Um, some analysts value stability in earnings as opposed to one company that grows 50% the next year and is down 50% the next year. Um, you know, those companies, some companies allow you to sleep at night. Some companies keep you up in the middle of the night. So the question is, what kind of investment profile do you have? What is your risk appetite? Um, are you managing some, uh, you know, your grandmother's, retirement savings, or are you managing a growth fund, you know, a hedge fund, uh, you know, looking for exponential earnings growth, you know, to double your earnings, you know, you've got no double your earnings, don't talk to me, right? I mean, I mean, it's different uh, uh, horses for different courses. Okay, how to evaluate choosing outsource IR company to suit a PLC, any criteria, best known method, how to, out, how to choose an outsource, okay. I mean, there are many uh, IR specialists out there. Um, you know, I, I don't don't need to name any of them. Uh, I think something you already know. Um, I think really is to, you know, before you you know before you deal. I mean, it's like dealing with any uh, supplier or dealing with any new customer, right? I think you 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 need to talk to them. You need to know whether you feel comfortable with the IR practitioner that you are dealing with. Uh, whether or not he's trying to overpromise and underdeliver, um, you know. You, so I think you need to interview them. Uh, you need to identify your terms of reference. What are they going to do? What are they promising to do for you? What do you want them to do for you? Um, so I think you you need to you know you need to under you need to to you know I, I you know is is see how many investor relations uh, practitioners. Are employed by that IR, you know, if you are, if they've got five guys there, they've got 50 companies, um, you know, how much time are they going to have to spend uh, for you? Uh, how much time are you giving them? Are you putting them on retainer or are you just engaging them for certain one-off events? Uh, so I think really you, you need to, to, to speak to them. You need to interview them to see whether or not your, your goals and your resources, uh, whether they meet or not. Okay, based on your experience, uh, is it important to host investor days? Uh, uh, if yes, why? How frequent? Idea to host this event annually? Uh, which quarter? Agonized physical. Okay, physical online. Okay, these days, um, um, I think if there are, if there if there's something for investors to see, touch, and feel, it's always uh, uh, better to do it physical. 
Um, but I, I used to cover companies in Hong Kong um, in the, back in the old days. And, um, you know, being based in Malaysia, uh, you know, if your investor base is not only domestic, then if you go and organize some physical event, then you're basically telling your overseas investors, sorry, uh, not in KL, not interested, can't service you, can't help you, tough, okay? So I think um, there is, a, depending on your, your investor base, whether they're domestic or more international, um, you know, you, you, you will then need to decide uh, whether or not you want to do physical or, or, or online. And I think a lot of companies, they do hybrids, hybrid meetings. So even though it's a physical meeting, uh, there's also a, a, a darling option. So, you know, if you have companies, uh, if you are a company that has overseas investors, uh, then I think it's always good. I mean, how much does it cost to 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 facilitate a Zoom call, right? I mean, it, it doesn't do much, and it it makes your 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 company more inclusive uh, to to uh, you know to to accommodate the uh, you know the the non domestic uh, investors. Um, you know, investor days. Yes, it's important if your company is big enough. Um, is there's a message to communicate if there are recent development? I mean, if if there's a reason to be doing it, uh, great. Um, you know, I think these investor days will tend to be, um, you know, more for, um, you know, bigger companies. Um, I think for the smaller, uh, mid-sized companies, it's obviously good enough to do, um, you know, to do, uh, you know, occasion, you know, broker road shows and and so on and so forth. I don't think there's a need to do an investor day per se. Uh, unless your 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 company is big enough, um, or you have a, a message to communicate. Okay, I I don't see any more Q and A uh, questions uh, on the box. So um, yeah, so thanks thanks very much for for listening to me uh, over the course of the last hour. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Um, you know, if there's a need to to reach out, um, I think. Uh, uh, Chung will will can share my my email address, uh, and I'm happy to to send my analysts round to your company. If you have a sexy story, please reach out to me. All right, thank you so much. All right, thanks, Alex. Uh, it's a very it's a power pack session, and uh, it's very insightful. And perhaps we can consider a second installment on this topic. <laughs> thanks again. Uh, to the uh, to the audience, uh, we truly appreciate your active participation in this uh, inaugural event. Uh, stay tuned for the upcoming events. And if you need any assistance, uh, don't hesitate to reach us at rr for you at bustamalaysia.com. Thank you all and have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good Thanks. weekend. Cheers. Bye.